What is up, Toolpathers? Today, we're making a bottle opener, but not just any bottle opener. We're making a bottle opener with some undercuts to it. And we're gonna see how Toolpath handles it. I'm gonna show you some things that we have to change along the way. Stay tuned, it's gonna be fun. All right, so here's the bottle opener. And you can see we have a little bit of an undercut going on right there. Um, what I'm going to do is because I'm kind of picky with my setups, I'm going to create two setups and then send it to Toolpath. So let's go ahead and add our setup. I don't care too much about where the work coordinate system is, just as long as it's in the right orientation. So let's go ahead and pick our Z axis plane. There, that's fine. Perfect. Let's just duplicate this setup as well for setup two. I'm going to edit and then just move this in the other direction. Click OK. Now, Toolpath will automatically generate setups, but again, like I said, I'm picky. So let's send this part to Toolpath. We can either generate them automatically or use the existing setups. So I'm going to use that. Click OK. Yeah. All right, so here's the part in Toolpath. We can see we get a 96% machinable surface area report. I like to call that the machinability report. And so down below here, we can see exactly why we're not machining the entire part. So we have a T-slot issue, but let's figure out why. So if I go into view feature details, I can see that Toolpath is recommending the key seat cutter that I need, but I don't have it in my library. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that tool to my library. And before we used to have to go back into Fusion and build the tool. But now what we can do is we can just jump over to libraries and I'm going to build it here in Core Tools Aluminum. Um, you can see I've actually already built it, but I'll show you exactly how this works. So if we go to add tool now, I'm going to pick slot mill, which is our key seat cutter. And now when I click on it, I can edit any of these parameters just like I can in Fusion. So we know our diameter is 0.75. We don't have a corner radius on this. Our flute length is 0.064. And our shaft diameter is 3 8 then if we jump over to the presets tab, we can see we just have a default preset. If I click into that, I can see exactly the feeds and speeds and the depth of cut, width of cut, all of that. Um, I'm actually going to generate presets for this. So what I can do is I can just click on this tool here and click generate presets. Is it's generated presets actually for my entire library. Um, so let's click into this. So Toolpath has actually added a couple extra presets I don't need. Um, I'm just using this tool for aluminum, so let's just kill low carbon steel preset and stainless. Cool. Um, just taking a look at uh, this guy, it looks like we're using 12,000 RPM at 63 inches a minute. I'm pretty happy with that. That doesn't seem too bad. Um, we can also set our step down and step over if we need to. I'm going to leave them uh, at nothing right there. So cool. Then we can go back to the tool save and there we have it right there so now that i have this tool built what i need to do is i need to update my cut config to be able to use a key seat cutter so i'm going to jump into my cut config and if i go to cutting rules in special i need a key seat preset so if i go over here to the left side i can see my alurot underscore key seat is unassigned so I can just simply drag that into there and save. And now when we run this part, instead of getting a 96% machinability score, I'll go ahead and regenerate. And now we get 100% machinable surface area. So if we go into our setups, and I like to click on this turn mouse over button, I'm gonna click here in that T slot, and we can see it's pulled our key seat cutter that we just built for roughing and finishing. And Toolpath is looking at this in a really smart way. So machining out this pocket. So if I click this face here, we can see it's machining out the pocket with the quarter inch and then leaving that undercut material and then finishing it, well, roughing and finishing it with a key seat cutter. So that's, that's super slick. Let's go see the results in Fusion. So all I have to do is now export to Fusion, click this button, click copy. And then we're going to hop into Fusion. I'm going to click Import Program. 
paste my code. And then I am going to include work holding. This is still a preview feature, but if you guys are interested, uh, just hit us up at support at toolpath.com and we can get you guys set up with the work holding stuff. So I'm going to click OK. OK, so at first this looks kind of funny, but I think I know exactly what happened. So if I jump back into the part that we sent over, if I look at my first setup, my X direction is in the wrong orientation. And I totally should have caught that before I sent this part out. Um, not a super big deal, but what it did was it added the part in the vise in kind of a very weird way. Um, I'm going to leave it just to show you guys the tool paths, but I'll change that before I run it. All right, well, let's take a look at these tool paths. So for setup one, it looks like we're doing a lot of adaptive roughing here. That looks fine. Uh, if I click into this adaptive roughing, I can see that it's using my adaptive rough preset. Make sure you guys can see that. My adaptive rough preset is being selected, um, which I've already you know determined these feeds and speeds, so I'm happy with that. Then we have a bore uh, facing operation. Uh, you know, it's not the end of the world that's doing that, but in this case, I would probably change the geometry instead of being the stock selection. I would just select the faces that need to be faced. Click OK. You know, it's going to save a little bit extra time. Um, am I being picky? Yeah. So honestly, the little bit of air cut cutting would have been fine. Uh, now, since I changed that, though, I do need to regenerate. So let me do that quick. So then we have an adaptive clearing with a quarter inch tool. We're using that to get in rest machining. And then we have some pocket clearing. It looks like this pocket clearing doesn't have any sort of tool path to it. We can investigate what that's, what's going on there. It looks like it's trying to do some pocket clearing here, which is kind of interesting because I think we do some clearing of that with the adaptive and a traditional rough. So I don't think that's a big deal. Um, I'm actually going to delete that. Then we do a 2D contour with a smaller end mill, or sorry, still our quarter inch end mill that we wrap around the part. Then we come in and do a finished wall, finished floor. So that looks really good. Then we do a finished wall here. So we come in and do a finished floor with that same tool to blend it all in. Our 2D pocket, we're using an even smaller tool here. You can see we've got our eighth inch and that's finishing the floors. And then we have some 3D finishing going on here, which that is not a bad result at all. I'm not excellent at 3D finishing. And so I'm pretty happy with that. We'll have to see how it comes out in the machine, but it's using our eighth inch ball nose and coming in and hitting this face and this face. Then we run a 2D chamfer and then some more 2D chamfers. And last but not least, we pull out our key seat cutter. Looks like we have a couple of different depths of cut, which makes sense because of our flute length. That toolpath looks pretty good. There is something goofy going on with, this is my model. If I click out of this, you can see this is our model. And our key seat isn't getting up high enough. So I might have to kind of investigate that, but overall, not a terrible result. Let's go ahead and just simulate this guy. Yeah, so so one thing we are missing here, and this is a lot easier to see, is like I said, we're missing kind of this this piece here. We need to be coming up a little bit higher. And then it looks like we missed this floor, this floor finishing here. So we're leaving some material left on there. So I can simply just add a flat finishing toolpath. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this result. Off camera, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this part back in the vise get the orientation set up correctly, and we're gonna machine the part. Up one came out great. The one thing that didn't come out great was actually what I ended up programming. So my flat toolpath, I didn't select 
um, the right contours or something, and so you can see some weird step in there. But uh, I don't know, it makes it look kind of artistic. Um, that undercut came out really great. That was all programmed with Toolpath. But overall, this saved me a lot of time um, just on the programming side of things. So that's Op1 done. Got it programmed with the help of Toolpath. I think I'm gonna cut the video here though. It's already getting a little long, so I think part two will be Op2 and even making some soft draws for this guy. If you guys wanna try Toolpath out for yourself, we have a 14 day free trial. Hopefully you guys learned a lot from this video. I had a lot of fun making it, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one where we finish this part.